Yo, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to be going over the NFL slate on DraftKings for Week 7. We just have a 10 game slate uh, for Week 7, so actually kind of a short slate. Not as many games as we normally have. Uh, just 7 games at 1 o'clock and then there's 3 games from 4 to 425. Just a 10 gamer for this Sunday, uh, so a limit, little bit of a limited player pool. Uh, but I'm still going to try and do my best to go through all the options I like at each position. Give some top plays, give some value plays as well. Of course, I'll build my five core plays that I expect to have a lot of exposure to, five guys I expect to have in a lot of my lineups. Uh, but before we do get started, guys, I want to let you know that I'm going to be making three videos today. Uh, so this will be the first video that goes up, my week seven video. Should be up around 12, 12.30 Eastern on Tuesday. Then a couple hours after that, I'll have my uh, showdown video for Thursday Night Football. That video should be up around 3, two, around 2.30, 3 o'clock Eastern time. And then later tonight, I'm going to make my uh, NBA video for Wednesday. So, I'm got, so I've got three videos going up today. Make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, so that way you won't miss out on any of my videos. Also, make sure you drop a like on this video. I would really appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Look at quarterback this week. The top options uh, for this slate, at least, I don't have a ton of interest in. I think if I would pay up for any of these guys, it'd probably be Kirk Cousins against the Jets. Just because Kirk Cousins is just so much volume. Uh... This guy's throwing the ball 40, close to 30, 35, 40 times a game. Uh, the Vikings really don't have much of a running game. Dalvin Cook's been injured all year. Latavius Murray, even though he had a good game last week, he's not a guy that they feed 20, 25 times a game. I expect Cousins to throw the ball a ton. Adam Thielen, a great receiver, or just a great receiver and a great, obviously, play on this slate. Uh, so Cousins, if I was to pay up, he'd probably be the guy I'd go to. But I think there are cheap options that we can consider. Uh, a lot of these guys, like in this mid-range, don't have really good matchups. Like Tom Brady is obviously a really good quarterback, but this is a tough spot for him on the road against the Bears. I don't really know how much upside Brady has. Andrew Luck has to face the Bills at home. I don't mind that matchup if you want to play Andrew Luck, uh, but I don't love him on this slate. I'll probably have some exposure, but Luck's by far not my favorite play. I like uh, sub-6K where we got some good options. So Baker Mayfield just really stands out, uh, stands out to me here. Against the Buccaneers, uh, this Buccaneers defense has just been so bad against the pass. Quarterbacks have been shredding this Buccaneers defense. I expect Baker Mayfield to put up a really good game here. I think he can easily get 20 to 25 DraftKings points. He is listed as questionable on DraftKings because, uh, as you can see here, he's dealing with a sore ankle, but Rappaport reported that he is expected to play. The injury isn't expected to prevent him from playing Week 7. Uh, so Mayfield should be good to go. Really like him here. Great matchup. He's cheap at 5,800. This is definitely a slate where you want to jam in some studs. We got Todd Gurley on this slate. Thielen's just been a great play every week. We're definitely going to want to try and get him into our lineups. Uh, so I think we're going to need to save some salary this week. We'll talk about wide receiver. There are a lot of cheap wide receiver plays I like. But at quarterback, I think there are cheap plays here. And Baker Mayfield is one of them at 5,800. Uh, but you can also look a little bit cheaper. Drew Brees, I don't like playing on the road, but I definitely want to mention him here because he's 5,700, and that's just really cheap for Drew Brees. I know it's not a good matchup on the road against Baltimore, really bad spot, uh, but Brees is very cheap. I'll probably have a little bit of exposure. I won't be going too crazy, but at that price, uh, he's definitely in play for me. Another guy is Joe Flacco. I think Joe Flacco is definitely in play here at home against the Saints. Saints defense has not been good against the pass. Flacco is not really a guy I play, but he's 5,400. Like I said, it's a week where we're trying to find value. I like Flacco as a cheap option. I think he is viable pretty much in cash games especially. I think I'll use him in some tournaments as well because we've seen Flacco put up some big games. Look at the game log. He's put up some 25, 30-point games. 25 against Pittsburgh, 23 against Cincy, 21 against Buffalo. Flacco's actually given you a pretty solid floor this year, somewhat of a ceiling as well, uh, and he's very cheap. So another quarterback play I do like. Uh, but that really is it for me at quarterback. I feel like I'm going to be sort of playing just a few options this week. I'm not going to have a ton of exposure to a lot of guys. I'll probably have some Cousins. I'll probably have some Andrew Luck. Obviously, I'm going to play Mayfield in some lineups. I'll throw Drew Brees in a sprinkle, and I'll sprinkle in Joe Flacco as well. Uh, but that's really it for me at quarterback. I don't love a lot of the other plays on this slate. Maybe Blake Bortles, but doubt I go too crazy on Blake Bortles. Uh, so let's go ahead and move on to running back. We do have Todd Gurley up top here. 9,800 against the 49ers on the road. Uh, Gurley for me, I can if I can fit him in, I'm going to fit him in, and I think I can pretty easily fit Gurley in this uh, this week. There is value at receiver that we'll talk about, 
Gurley was 10K last week against Denver. Rushed the ball 28 times for 208 yards. Got two catches as well for 17 yards. 39 DraftKings points. Got two rushing touchdowns. Uh, he was 10K last week. Scored 39 DraftKings points. And his price dropped to 9,800. Not really sure why that is. Uh, but Gurley at 9,800. Still, he's pretty expensive. But it's going to be easy to fit him in this week, I feel like. Uh, so love Todd Gurley. Dude's a beast. I'm going to go ahead and say it. This might be a hot take. But I don't think Gurley scores less than 20 fantasy points all year. Obviously, since I say that, this will probably be the week he scores 15 fantasy points. Uh, but you just look at the game log. This dude just gets so much usage, so much work. 26, 32, 28, 25, 33, 39 draft points. Gurley's giving you a 20-point floor this year, seems like, and he's got that 40, 45-point ceiling. He can score multiple touchdowns. Uh, Gurley, he's pretty much a plug-and-play every week if you can fit him in, and this is one of the weeks where we definitely want to fit him in. Uh, but there are other plays at the top of the running back position I think are viable. Uh, Kamara, for me, on the road against Baltimore, I think I'm going to shy away from Kamara. I do like Zeke Elliott, though, against Washington. Uh, Washington's run's defense has not been very good. They haven't really been able to stop the run. Uh, I expect Zeke to be a vocal point of that Cowboys offense. 8,100, he's for sure in play for me. If I can fit him and Gurley in, I will for sure be trying to do that. Same with McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey just... He gets so much work that he has to be considered, especially at 7,700, especially on DraftKings with it being a full PPR. We know how much McCaffrey is involved in the passing game. If I can fit him in, him, Gurley, and McCaffrey, or Gurley, Elliott, and McCaffrey, I'll try and do that. I think it's going to be pretty, pretty tough. I'd have to like go cheap at all three of my wide receiver spots. Uh, but we might be able to do it this week. Once we get a wide receiver, we'll talk about a lot of the value plays there. Uh, but other options, like in this mid-range, don't love a lot of the plays here. At least not really a lot stand out to me. Maybe TJ Yeldon if Fournette's out again, but I don't think I'm going to go too crazy on TJ Yeldon, especially with him disappointing last week. Uh, Sonny Michelle has a tough matchup against the Bears, but Sonny Michelle has been just crushing it for the Patriots lately, just getting a lot of work. 24 carries Sunday night against the Chiefs. Also got a target as well. He's not really involved in the passing game. They usually leave that up to James White. Uh, when it comes to carries, Michelle is their guy. He's their guy when they need uh, touchdowns in the sort of when they get to the goal line he's the running back they have in there he scored a touchdown in three straight games could definitely add to that streak uh this week it is a tough matchup but he's cheap he's 5500 it's not like he's crazy expensive you're getting a guy at 5500 getting 20 25 touches a game uh, so i don't mind him won't go too crazy on michelle but i'm sure i'll have a little bit of exposure uh, other plays like Tariq cohen against the patriots i like here cohen's actually been getting a lot of work especially in the passing game there's a chance the Bears are playing from behind against the Patriots. There's a chance the Patriots can get up, and they're going to have to be playing from behind. Cohen's just been playing a lot better than Jordan Howard lately, and I think we continue to see him get a ton of work in the passing game. Uh, so at uh, 5,100 as sort of a cheaper play, I don't mind Tariq Cohen. I think I'll have some exposure to him this week. Uh, and then sub-5K, cheap, cheap options. Carlos Hyde has a good matchup against Tampa Bay. Hyde hasn't been that great lately especially like efficient-wise, he hasn't been that great. Got 14 carries week 6 against the Chargers, only 34 yards. 17 carries week 5 against Baltimore, only 63 yards. He's not really involved in the passing game much, uh, but if they get to the goal line, Hyde's going to be the guy they have in there that they use to score the touchdown. So there could be a chance he scores this week at 4,700 in a good matchup against Tampa Bay. You could go to Hyde, but I like the passing game more from Cleveland. Mayfield, obviously, Jarvis Landry we'll talk about, Njoku. I think those are going to be the guys that I probably target from Cleveland. Uh, so that's really it for me when it comes to running back. I think this is a position where we're going to want to try and pay up this week and fit in the expensive plays. Not a lot of value that I really like. Uh, but let's go ahead and move on to receiver. This is a position where we obviously have expensive plays as well, but there is a lot of value at receiver. I'll probably be going cheap at this position, uh, but if I can fit in Adam Thielen into some lineups, Adam Thielen... Just a great play every week. He's getting priced up. He's 8600 this week. But that honestly might be too cheap. This guy's giving you a floor like a running back, like a Todd Gurley. Just look at his DraftKings points per week. 19, 34, 27, 30, 27, 32 DraftKings points through six weeks this year. He's gotten over 100 yards in six straight games. Against the Jets, I don't think that stops. I think we see Thielen get 100 yards again. He's going to get multiple, uh, multiple catches, probably six, seven catches, if not more. We know he's going to get double-digit targets. With how much the Vikings throw, Thielen and Diggs are going to be guys we have to consider every week, and I think this is one of those weeks 
where we definitely have to consider them. They're going to have to be in our player pool, even though they're expensive. Uh, Adam Thielen's a guy I'm going to have exposure to. I'll try and fit him and Gurley into some lineups if I go really cheap at receiver. I think Ross Construction is going to be really interesting in this, this week, just seeing how many of these studs you can fit in. Maybe if you have to sacrifice some in some lineups, what that's going to cost you. Uh, but Thielen, up top at receiver, great play this week. Obviously the best receiving option on the slate. Uh, but there are other plays I do like. Jarvis Landry is one of them against Tampa Bay. Uh, Landry was really disappointing last week, so he might be somewhat low-owned this week. It's a great bounce-back spot. The Buccaneers, like I said at the beginning, their pass defense just so bad. It's a great spot for the Browns to put up points. Really like Jarvis Landry. You can run it back with Mike Evans on the other side if you want to game stack that game. It does have one of the highest totals on the slate. Opened at 49, and it's up to 49 and a half. Uh, that game, the Patriots-Bears game, the Ravens, Saints, and uh, the 49ers, Bron- or 49ers, Rams. Those are the games that have the highest totals right now. 49ers, Ram is leading the pack at 52 and a half. Uh, so this game, Cleveland, Tampa Bay, it should be a high scoring game. One of the highest totals. I like Evans and Landry if you want a game stack. Uh, Steph Diggs right there in price though is for sure in play for me. If there's lineups where I pair Cousins with Thielen, I'm sure there's going to be lineups where I don't play Thielen. I'll go Cousins to Diggs especially because Diggs is $1,400 cheaper. Obviously, Thielen's been the better receiver so far. Uh, but when you're getting $1,400 in savings, if Thielen somehow has a bad game or just doesn't put up that monster game and it's Diggs that maybe catches the touchdowns, then obviously he's going to be a great value for $1,400 cheaper than Thielen. Uh, but going down to this mid-range, DeAndre Hopkins for me, I'm going to have exposure to this week. I'm not going to go crazy on DeAndre Hopkins. But at 6,900, I know it's a bad spot against Jacksonville, especially on the road. But we saw last year, DeAndre Hopkins, he went up against this Jacksonville team and did pretty well. Really, nobody's been able to stop Hopkins this year. He's going to get targets either way. You just look at the targets. Uh, We'll pull up his game log. Look at targets week by week. He's getting double digits pretty much every week, no matter who he's going up against. He did have a tough matchup last week against the Bills and against Tredavious White. But he still got five catches for 63 yards and a touchdown. After, or before that game, 13 targets, 12, 10, 11, 11. He's pretty much like an Adam Thielen where he's going to get pretty close to 10 or more targets every game. I don't expect that to stop here. Even in a tough matchup, I think we see Hopkins get double-digit targets again this week. I will have some exposure, especially at 6,900 to him at least. Uh, but let's go a little bit cheaper. Let's talk about the value. I'm going to kind of skip these like 5K plays. Uh, we want, really want to talk about these cheap options down here. So there's two guys in the 4K range that I really like. We'll start off with Jermaine Curse. I expect him to be pretty popular this week, but for good reason. He's only 4,100. He should see double-digit targets here. With Quincy Anunwa out for at least, I believe he's out for two to three weeks, it's going to be Jermaine Curse seeing a lot of targets uh, from Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold's going to be looking his way a lot. We saw that week six against the Colts when Anunwa went out. Curse was targeted a ton. He got nine catches for 94 yards. I don't know who Xavier Rhodes is going to cover, whether it be Curse, whether it be Terrell Pryor, Robbie Anderson. If Curse is not covered by Rhodes, I think he's a really good value play, especially at 4,100. Didn't get priced up enough. I expect his role to continue to increase week by week, and I think this week we're going to see his role really increase. We're going to see him get about 8, 9, possibly 10 targets again. Could find the end zone at 4,100. Jermaine Curse, one of the better value receivers. Also at 4K, I've heard a lot of people talk about him, but for good reason. Willie Sneed at 4K is a good value play this week. He's getting a ton of targets for being this cheap, at least. For a 4K receiver, getting 7, 8, 9 targets a game, uh, Willie Sneed should definitely be on your radar this week. Also, it is a revenge game. He's going up against his former team, the Saints. So maybe with the revenge narrative, Willie Sneed finds the end zone. Wouldn't surprise me. I like Flacco this week. I like some of his pass catchers. Willie Sneed is one of them. I feel like people are going to pair Snead and Flacco together in cash, and I think that does make a lot of sense, especially with how cheap both of them are. Uh, Snead at 4K, him and Curtis, one of the better value receivers. Uh, There are also some other value receivers, though, that we can consider besides these two guys. Uh, So Antonio Callaway has a great matchup this week against Tampa Bay. He did get 10 targets last week against the Chargers. He only got, or he only caught two catches, or he only got two catches, excuse me, two catches for nine yards. 4.9 4.9 DK points, but he still did see 10 targets. As long as Rashad Higgins remains out, Antonio Callaway at 4,300 with this matchup is definitely on my radar and is a value play that I'm going to be considering this week. I think he is a guy that we can look to. 
So if you were to play like Curse, Snead, and Callaway all at receiver, you could pretty much go Gurley, McCaffrey, and uh, Ezekiel Elliott if you wanted to do that. You could pretty easily jam in the top three running backs on the slate by punt and receiver. Uh, but I think that's it for receiver this week, at least the receivers I like that I have my eye on. Let's go ahead and move on and do tight end. Look at this position. Uh, usually a position I try and go cheap. I normally don't pair my quarterback with the tight end, but David Njoku, I'm going to be pairing him a lot with Baker Mayfield. Uh, Njoku got a ton of targets last week. The Browns have come out and said they want to get Njoku involved, and they did do that last week. He got 12 targets against the Chargers, 7 catches for 55 yards. Didn't find, uh, or he did find the end zone, 18.5 DK points. He's getting targets like a receiver would, double-digit targets for Njoku. Love him here. Going to be pairing him with Mayfield in a lot of lineups. I'll run it back with d Godwin, might even have some Mike Evans on the other side. The game stack, like I mentioned, is for sure in play for me. Uh, but other tight ends, if you're paying up, obviously Zach Ertz for me is a top tight end. I don't think I'm going to have much Gronk. Gronk's just really been disappointing this year. I know his price is dropping, but if I'm going to pay up at tight end, I'd just go up to Ertz or i just try and find some cheaper options. There are cheaper options I like. Obviously, Nujoku, you got. You can go to Trey Burton at 4,300. I think Trey Burton's definitely in play. O.J. Howard at 3,600, probably one of the better just overall value plays against the Browns. You could consider O.J. Howard. If I'm trying to punt this position and go really cheap, he'll probably be the guy that I'll land on. Uh, but if I can pay up, it's Ertz. In the mid-range, it's pretty much Njoku, Burton, and then value, it's O.J. Howard for me. Those are kind of the tight ends I'm probably going to stick to this week. Uh, but let's go ahead and move on to defense. Look at the defenses uh, real quickly. If I'm paying up at this position, I think I'm probably going to play the Colts at 3,300 at home against the Bills. Just such a good spot for them. Really like the Colts here. If you want to go to the Vikings, you could go to the Vikings. If you want to go to the Rams, you go to the Rams. But I think the Colts at 3,300, the defense I really like above 3K. Uh, but sub 3K, looking for value. Always like to go cheap at this position. You got the Dolphins at home at 2,500, getting Matthew Stafford on the road. We know Stafford is not nearly as good of a quarterback on the road as he is at home. I do like the Dolphins at home. If you think Drew Brees uh, struggles on the road against the Baltimore, you do have Baltimore's really good defense down here at 2,400. They could be a value defense you consider. There aren't a lot of cheap defenses I really like this week. Like I'm not going to be playing the Jets, the 49ers, even though they're at home and they're cheap. Uh, against Kirk Cousins, I probably shy away there. I think for me, it's probably going to be, I'll have some exposure to the Ravens. I'll definitely have the Dolphins. I feel like the Dolphins are probably going to be my highest exposed defense. And if I can fit the Colts in, I'll be trying to do that. But uh, I don't expect to have a ton of defenses Like when it comes to exposure. I'll probably just stick to like three or four defenses this week. Uh, but yeah, I think that's it for defense. And I think that's it for the video, guys. Hopefully you did enjoy this video and hopefully it did help you. Like I said at the beginning, I've got three videos coming out today. This one, uh, showdown video, and then my NBA video for Wednesday. Make sure you check all of them out. Make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Uh, so that way you won't miss out on any of my new videos. Also, make sure you drop a like. If you do have any questions, feel free to hit me up on Twitter at the DFS underscore GOAT, or you can leave a comment down below, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, but yeah, guys, I think that's pretty much it. Good luck on this Week 7 slate, and we will see you back again later today with my showdown video. Peace.